Hey everybody, it's Rob here with another Hammered Halo DIY project for you. In this video, I'll show you how I built this awesome and functional clothing rack for my daughter. So the inspiration for this build came from a text I got a couple of weeks ago. It goes something like this. Hey dad, so I have too many clothes and my closet's too small. To which I responded with a typical dad response, that sounds like a you problem. Which in turn came with a typical daughter response. Well, now I make it a you problem. She then goes on to ask me if I can make her a garment rack. And then, as usual, off to the store I go. I don't know what it is, but between my wife and my daughter, I spent a lot of time at the building supply store and in the shop. She sent me several ideas of the ones she liked, so I came up with a combination of all three. All of them were a bit industrial looking with the use of steel pipe and a combination of different pipe fittings. Starting off with the wood, I picked up one 16 inch by three quarter inch piece of laminated pine for the base and one 12 inch by three quarter inch pine for the top shelf. The total length of the clothing rack will be 58 inches. So the first step was to cut the base shelf and the top shelf both at 58 inches. I'm making these cuts with a skill saw and I'm using a straight edge with two C-clamp vice grips to ensure a straight cut. I only want the base to be a total of 12 inches wide so at this point I'm cutting an inch and a half off each edge of the board while also cutting it at a 45 degree angle. After setting my saw I can now rip the inch and a half off of each edge of the board. And here I'm cutting the ends of the baseboard to create the same 45 degree angle on each end. Now that I have a 12 inch board as the base and two inch and a half strips, I can now flip the board over, glue up and pin the inch and a half miter pieces to each side of the base. I've also went ahead and cut two smaller inch and a half miter pieces for each end. Now for glue up, I'm putting the inch and a half skirt frame together first, basically as a box frame, gluing all the miters, and then pinning it together using 18 gauge inch and a half inch brad nails. And here I'm just applying glue to the underside of the 45 of the top lid and also to the 45 degree on the box frame. And once I'm completely glued up, I can marry the two together. And once again, using inch and a half brad nails, I secure the top to the bottom box frame. There's two reasons for adding this inch and a half skirt. One, it will add strength to the base, and two, it'll slightly hide the wheels that'll go on at the end. Now keep in mind, you don't have to miter your edges. You could just butt joint it together. You'll accomplish the same thing either way. Moving on to the steel pipes and fittings for this build. I picked up four half inch flanges, two six point half inch connectors, one three point half inch connector, two half inch end caps, five six inch by half inch lengths, four 24 by half inch lengths, and two 48 inch half inch lengths, as well as two swivel casters and two non-swivel casters for the base. Assembling these pieces is pretty straightforward. They all just screw together, but word of advice, wear gloves because these pipes and fittings have a tendency to turn your hands black really fast.
Now that the pipes are assembled into the configuration I want, I can go ahead and start to get ready on finishing these pipes. I chose to go with a gold colored spray paint, well, because this is for my daughter who is the only princess in my life, so what better color than gold for a princess? Before spraying any kind of finish on any of these pipes, I'm going to wipe them all down with lacquer thinner to remove any grease or oil residue that may still be on the pipes. After this process, I will then apply a primer to the entire rack. I'm hoping this will help create a stronger bond for the finish color. Okay, while that's drying, I can now turn my attention back to the bottom wood base and the top shelf. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is sand the entire base and the top shelf. I'll start with the base here, sanding the top and the skirt that we applied to it. And then I will do the same on the top shelf. I've decided to paint the wood white, so I'm going to use a primer to seal the raw wood first, applying primer to both the bottom, base and the top shelf. You know, I was a little worried about the grain popping after I put some paint on this, but even with this primer, the grain really stands out nice. And once the finish goes on, it'll be a satin finish, pure white. I think that grain will turn out really, really nice. I'm not sure you can see that in the camera, but just the texture of the grain looks uh, amazing. Now once this primer completely dries, I can then add two coats of pure white finish. Okay, it's been about six hours since applying all the finish coats on all the wood. I can now go ahead and attach the caster wheels to the underside of the base. I'll be using a number 12, three quarter inch screw to fasten the wheels to the base. Measuring in three quarters of an inch from either side of each corner of the base, I will mark and pre-drill all the screw holes and then go ahead and mount the wheels. Now I can simply attach the metal frame by first centering it on the base and then pre-drilling all the holes and screwing it down using again the 3 quarter by number 12 screws. One thing I didn't get on camera is that I spray painted all the number 12 screws that would be visible with the gold spray paint. Well, I had a lot of fun building this clothing rack and I think it turned out amazing. As for my daughter, she absolutely loves it and no longer needs a bigger closet for now. So that's going to do it for this build. If you enjoyed it and you got some value from it, I hope you get out your biggest hammer and absolutely destroy that thumbs up button. And if you like DIY and home improvement videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay connected and up to date on future projects. I'm Rob with Hammered Halo Projects, and remember, you only fail if you don't try. So get out there and build something.